um, we don't have any technical difficulties, then we'll be able to post this out on our YouTube site in a couple of weeks um, once we have it converted over and ready. So about a minute more, we want to make sure we give everybody the opportunity to get logged in. For those of you who just joined us, if you could please use the instructions in the upper left-hand corner of your screen under audio information to mute your phone line by pressing star 6 or using the mute button on your phone's keypad. You can always unmute later on to ask questions during the presentation. Um, or you'll be able to also pose questions in the ch chat pod, oh, which is on the lower left-hand sure. corner of the screen. All right, we've got 10 o'clock. So for those who've just joined, I, I am hearing some voices in the background. If you'd please mute your phone line by pressing star 6 on the phone's keypad. I appreciate that. Um, or you can always use your mute button on the phone. And if you want to unmute later on during the webinar to ask questions, you can use the information in the upper left-hand corner of your screen um, where it, it says that you can hit pound 6 to unmute. Um, you can also present questions in the chat pod, which is in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get things going. Um, this is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center. And we're very pleased this morning to be able to partner with Ian Kidner, who is the GIMS Systems Administrator, to present a webinar on our TIM system. Ian, it's all yours. Take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Victoria. Uh, so yes, my name is Ian Kidner with the Office of Technical Services here at ODOT. I am the product manager of the TIMS application. For today's webinar, I'm going to focus on uh, a general how to access the site, provide a brief site overview, and then focus on some system updates that were recently uh, released a little over a month ago. After we review those updates, I'll pause to see if there's any questions. And I imagine that we'll still have time, and I'll continue on with some other functionality that currently exists in the site. And then we will uh, wrap up. Uh, so that I want to share nice plan for today. Thanks, Ian. And this is Victoria again real quick. For those who have just joined us, if you could please mute your phone line by pressing star 6 on your phone's keypad so we can minimize background noise, we would appreciate it. Um, you can always unmute later. Thank you. And now I'm trying to... Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, just to get to the TIMS site, uh, or I guess we'll start off with what is TIMS. Uh, I, some people might be familiar with it, some people might not, but TIMS is a, a web mapping application, a website that ODOT has publicly available where we publish a large amount of information uh, that helps support transfer, transportation planning activities throughout the state of Ohio. Morning. Good morning. You're and, the only one uh, in the park? Yeah, it looks like it. Excuse uh, me, could you please mute the phone? I'll for the commissioner's meeting in a few minutes. We're hearing some background noise. Could you please mute your phone line by pressing star six on your phone's keypad? or press the mute button on your phone keypad. All right. So um, in any case, so it's a, it's, a, it's a website where you can access a lot of information and hopefully perform some light analysis. And if you need to access that information and download it to perform more in-depth analysis, you have that ability too. So getting to the TIM site, uh, you can navigate to the ODOT main web page and then under the featured items on the left-hand side, you scroll down and you'll see an area called Maps and References. And right there is the link for Tim. Of course, once you've come here before, you can see the, uh, the actual web address, which is the gis.dot.state.oh.us slash Tim. And you're going to be free to bookmark that in your web browser, or it might just remember in your, your web history, and you can always go back to it that way as well. So looking at this home page, uh, you'll notice that there's six different, there's six different buttons uh, that comprise the site. Uh, and we'll walk briefly through all of these uh, and then focus on uh, the updates to the site. 
So I'm going to start with the project search. Uh, here we, we provide an ability to search our what we call our LS database, which is our project database uh, where we, we basically store all the projects that are going on uh, in the state of Ohio that are transportation related through ODOT. Uh, this database contains records reaching back to about 2003 and it also includes future projects that have committed funding. So when you, when you access this page, you'll see at the top that there are these different filters and these different drop-downs. And down below, you see this results, uh, this results table. Uh, you can see here that we have about uh, almost 50,000 re records available at this time. And what these represent are different work locations. You might notice here that we have a PID number or project ID, and you'll notice that uh, there's multiple or the same project ID is listed multiple times. And that's because sometimes in the state of Ohio we sell a, a project that has multiple work locations. And so we want to we be able to make sure we can find all of those in this mapping system. So 49,000 records is a lot to sort through and that's why we can use these different filters to, to start whittling those down. So I could start with district, or I could go into the county right away, or if I know a specific PID, I could just type it in there. So I'll just demonstrate this by clicking on district 6, and then you can see the table is updated automatically, and then maybe I'm interested in ones that are in only Franklin County. And then we can see here, again, the table is updated very quickly, and now we're down to about 1,600 records. We could continue to, to narrow this by looking at primary work categories or by just clicking on a, a fiscal year to and from date. So if we just look at the current fiscal year, we can see now we're down to 88 uh, records very quickly. And then maybe we want to use this freeform text search to look for maybe pavement projects. And I can just type in the word pavement. Um, you'll notice here that if I misspell something, uh, it won't find any records because it's searching this table for whatever text I put in there. And so if I take out those, those S, then I can see, ah, now it's showing me just those pavement projects. You can also sort these records by clicking on the column header and you can get to, uh, you can see things differently. Here, you have, once you've sorted things um, or, and filtered, you know, you see some basic information here, the work category, the route, the, the county, the district, and, and now you can do more where you can either, you can click on this uh, magnifier glass to the view details button and that will take you to the project information page. And here you can see more detailed information about the project. So we, we see stuff uh, referencing, you know, who's the project manager, the, the dates and numbers associated with this project, such as the funding and the, preser and the different categories the funding is coming from. This is a, not a bridge project, so there is no bridge information associated with it. And then down below, we have some additional people associated with it. And we'll see if this project has it. Uh, we also link to the project plans from the Office of Contracts page, and it does. So here, I can download the PDF uh, plans uh, from the contracts page. And this might take a second. There we go. So here's the, uh, the, the plans. And if there's a um, project addenda, you can, you can capture those uh, from that transportation uh, page as well. So very quickly you can see you can access quite a bit of information about uh, projects that are being worked on in the state of Ohio. Now from here, I could either view this in the map by clicking on this blue button right here, or if I navigate back to the transportation project search page, and it will remember your selections in the filter, but it will not remember what you typed in this, uh, this text search box. What I can also do is I can by clicking and highlighting these records, I can make a multiple record selection. And you can choose to export that information to these different formats, those being MS Excel, the Google KML format, the ESRI shapefile or geodatabase format. Or you could also just choose to view it or multiple ones in the map by clicking this and then it will move you over to the create a map page and 
hopefully render this. I did not test this one. It might take a minute for it to load. And it did not load that. Let's try that. Let's refresh that, see if it loads it. There you go with a live demo. You always have something a little out of the ordinary, but it usually works pretty well. So in general, that's the project search page. It's a, it's a pretty quick way to find information about projects that are going on in the state of Ohio. Um, looking back at the home screen, uh, the next area is to create a map, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over that because we're gonna focus more on that as we discuss the updates to the site. And uh, most of the updates, the recent updates have occurred here. Looking at the data download page, this is where you can download in bulk entire data sets that are available uh, on the site. Uh, this site, or this page has been updated recently, uh, but the end user, you guys really won't see much of a difference except for the performance is gonna be much better than it was previously. So here you see these different uh, groupings of information, so stuff like assets, boundaries, environmental, and so on, which are the same ones you see in the create a map. And if you expand this out, you just select the, the, the inventories or, or data sets that you're interested in, and you can see as I select those, the number updates here. So it says I have four selected or five. Uh, I could also select across the different groupings if I wanted to, it doesn't matter. And then once you have the ones you're interested in, you uh, click on this blue export data button and you, you ask uh, or you request which format you want. So Excel, KML, Shapefile, Geodatabase, and so on. And then it will just download all of those um, to your, your download folder. So, and, and then you can open up those zip files and consume that in your, your desktop GIS or your, your other application. Um, keep in mind that some of these data sets are updated on a regular basis. So if you download uh, some of this information today, it might be outdated tomorrow because we might make updates. Typically, the, the, uh, the data sets that are being updated are these inventory data sets. Uh, the rest of the, the data is updated more on an annual basis. If you have questions about that frequency, uh, please let me know and I can get you that information. You'll notice at the top of the, every page there is the site navigation, so you do not necessarily have to jump back to the main home screen to navigate to other areas of the site. So for instance, uh, the next area I want to uh, demo is the standard PDF map page. And so if we click on that, uh, it comes to this page. Here, this uh, allows the site to generate some high-level maps of, that are of a certain type uh, to help get you started with certain information. So for instance, we have uh, these different map types available, the annual construction work plan, construction season, a fiscal year project map, a functional classification map, which was recently added in the last couple of weeks, and then a multi-year work plan and a SIP map. And you select the map type you want. You select your area of interest based off of these uh, options, county, district, MPO, and so on. And then you select the particular one you want. We'll just do, we'll take dark. You can choose a base map, such as a street base map, a hybrid, a topographical map, and so on. Your format being a PDF, JPEG or a PNG file, and then you can choose a, um, I guess we only have a portrait for this one. We, uh, we might have uh, landscapes in the future. But then we also have uh, added additional sizes, uh, which is new. So previously you could only print the 11 by 17 output format, but now we have uh, 17 by 22 and 34 by 44 if you uh, happen, which can be very beneficial if you happen to have a plotter and you want to print a large wall map of this information. So you just select the, the size you want, you click the generate map, and it will spin here and let you know that it's thinking and creating the map. And once it's available, this button, uh, there we go, the download button becomes active. You click the download button and we see that map. So here we've also had some updates 
to these PDF maps. What you'll notice is we've added an outline of the area of interest that this map is referencing. And that's very helpful because even though we're making a, a stiff map of Dark County, uh, you'll see projects that show, still show up outside. And so the, that the, the county border helps you understand uh, the, the area of interest and what's going on within that area. We also reference and we, we've inserted the, the particular county name or area of interest name that, that the map was printed for. And then down below, you'll see a description of how we determine which projects are, are included on this map and which projects aren't. And hidden behind this thing, you'll see at the very bottom of the screen, it will tell you what date this map was printed, uh, which is very helpful because the project information is updated on a daily basis. So if a, a change is made, by uh, Ellis coordinator or a new project is scheduled and it, it's added to the STIP or added to the construction season plan or what have you, um, it, if you would reprint this map uh, after that's added, it would now it would then show up. So just an easy way to get a, a high level overview of what's going. You'll notice that the, these project maps, they just show the location. Uh, they often show the year associated with that project and they show the project ID. Uh, so they, they do not necessarily meet all the needs, all the mapping needs, but again, it's a good conversation starter where you can find out what's going on, and then you can use Tim's interactive map to, to find out more, or you could always contact the ODOT personnel for more specific questions about those products or projects. Um, so that's the standard, those are some of the updates to the standard PDF map area. Um, I'm going to skip over the map viewers and come back to that and jump over to the data glossary portion of the site. So here, this page uh, provides definitions for all the data sets that you can find in TIM and hopefully all the columns of the data sets in, in, that you can find here. And this was just a, our, our, our goal is to help make this information more useful and provide better context so you can you can search, you can say, I'm looking just for the BMP inventory, and you can see all the different fields that are available from the BMP inventory, and you'll see a basic description. We're trying to make these more descriptive. You can see here some of these are not terribly descriptive, and we're working on, uh, on making those better. Uh, in some cases, over here under the links and metadata, uh, we have hyperlinks to other pages. So this one's going to take us to uh, the Office of Hydraulic Engineering, where there's some more information about uh, post-construction BMPs and, and then whatnot. Um, and we're going to continue to build out these links as they become available and relevant in the data glossary. So pretty helpful. Uh, you can also export this information if you want, uh, if that's helpful for you, uh, just so you know um, what the data sets and what the information's about. So now um, I'm going to dive into the create a map and then we'll talk about the map viewers also uh, where most of the current enhancements have, have happened. So looking at the map viewer or create a map, if you've never been here before, what you have is at the top of the screen we have the map itself and you can, it's interactive, you can use your mouse to zoom in and out or you can use these navigation uh, icons up here in the upper left hand corner to zoom in and out as well. You see a blue bar across the bottom of the map and this uh, includes a number of different menu options that, that provide different map functionality and we'll walk through a, a number of these today. And then down below the map is where you interact with those different map tools that you activate on the blue bar. So when you load the map, we have the layers list, which is this first one on the left-hand side. That's available, and you can see the legend. Then all the way at the bottom, we have a results table. And there's nothing currently loaded into that, but we'll see that in action here in just a minute. So viewing information on the map is pretty easy. We see these layers, much like we saw on the data download page. And I expand it out. If I'm interested in one, say the culvert inventory, I click on that, you can see the legend updates and it shows me the symbol that's going to display. But nothing's happening on the map. 
In this case, there's a lot of culverts in the state of Ohio, so we want you to zoom in a little bit closer, and now they show up. It just helps speed up the performance of the site and make sure everything works very smoothly for you. So now you can see the culverts. If you zoom in even further, lots of times we have labels show up for the individual records. In this case, we're seeing the CFN, or culvert file number, um, and, and that's just pretty consistent through a lot of these other ones. So we can look at the bridge inventory. There's all the bridges. Same type of thing. We have the, uh, the, the structure file number available there. We have pavement condition rating. Um, so we have those color coded by, uh, by different groupings. So the, the red's not so good. The blue is pretty new pavement. And then we have the specific PCR uh, labeled for each segment. And you can check out all these different inventories and assets here. Uh, under boundaries, you know, this is the type of stuff you see, county boundaries, municipal boundaries, townships. We also have political jurisdictions. We have some PUCO service areas available and some school district information. Uh, we have environmental information. So there's uh, some different restriction layers. These are more oriented towards ODOT staff who are doing maintenance activities along our right of way, and it's, it's areas where we might have a restriction for, for spraying, for in this case, maybe a certain type of herbicide, or maybe there's a certain type of year we don't want to mow, or, or whatever it is, and they're, they're, they're supposed to check with our district environmental coordinators on that. But we also have uh, national uh, wetland inventories, scenic rivers, EPA, EPA ecological regions, and so on. Then we have project information. So this is the same information that we saw on the uh, project search page at the beginning of the webinar. Um, it's just available here in the map view if you want to go directly to it. You'll notice uh, we have all project points and all projects linear, and that's consistent here. So we have next four fiscal year points and next four fiscal year lines and previous four points, lines, and so on. And, and the reason for that is sometimes projects have a specific location, such as a bridge, or sometimes they occur over a duration of, uh, of a road segment with a begin and an end, and they are re represented as a line. And just with mapping technology, you, you kind of have, you can't mesh the two too well, uh, so you have points and lines. So if we activate those, we can see, and there's all the projects. Maybe we want to look at these buttons for the next four fiscal years, so we're not looking at everything that's in Ellis. And we can see the projects are, are color-coded by the fiscal year. And we have a basic label of the PID and the uh, primary work category. And then, of course, I'll, as I'll demonstrate here in a minute, we can search those things in the map as well. We have roadway information. Uh, so here's stuff like traffic counts, traffic AEDT. We have the road inventory, which provides physical characteristics of the road, and then other classifications of the road and other things going on here. The strategic transportation system is related to our Access uh, 2040 plan, our Access Ohio 2040 plan, our long range plan. And then we have some safety information. <coughs> so these, these are crash records um, in the state of Ohio. So these are all records that uh, occur according to those years uh, on all public roads that we, that we know about. So 2015, 2014, and 2013 are available. Um, we have new data sets that we're always adding, so we, we have a monthly update cycle, so you'll see new stuff come out here, or we're updating existing ones. So let's see how we, we do some quick searches. So uh, one of the easiest ways is to use this Identify Features tool. Uh, once you've activated a layer and you can see those records on the map, you click the I button, and the form down here changes. And it says, what features do you want to identify from? And you could have multiple layers activated. In this case, I have the bridge and the county. And I tell it I'm interested in the bridge inventory. And now when I move the map or the, the, the mouse back to the map, I, I get these crosshairs. And I can make a selection. So I'll click on this bridge. And it selects it. You can see it's highlighted. And now down below in the results grid, I see all the bridge information in, uh, in this table. You can also export this information to those different formats, and, um, and you can keep on going. If you want to keep on identifying, you, you can keep on doing that. Once you have the Identify tool active, you just keep on identifying different bridges, and it works pretty well. Um, that's great for one or two bridges at a time or records at a time. 
Uh, perhaps you're interested in asking a more comprehensive uh, query. And here we have these filter, uh, these different filter tools. The first one is the filter by attribute. And this is where we could ask, uh, we could filter records based off of um, criteria within the, the database. So for instance, maybe I'm interested in bridges that are in a certain county, and we'll just use Franklin County. And then I'll hit this great green add filter button and add another line in there. And maybe I want to know all the bridges in Franklin County that are on an interstate. And maybe I want to know all the bridges in Franklin County that have a general appraisal of a certain value. Let's look for, let's look for six. Let's see if we have any of those. I hit the search button. It thinks for a minute. Maybe a little bit longer than a minute. And there, okay, we got almost 70 records. You can see them highlighted on the map here. And down in the results grid, we have all of those loaded up. Um, once you've made a selection, like a large selection like this, if you want to zoom to a particular one of these records, you can, you can click this uh, zoom to feature. It will center the map on that particular record and it works pretty well. Or if you want to remove one of those records from this selection, if you were going to export it for some reason and you just didn't want that record in there, you could click this, uh, this remove option and it removes those records that you're doing. You do them one at a time. Um, and then you could export that. So pretty handy tool. Let's see what else we have. Some other filter options that we have are this, um, the filter by geography is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to run it, but you just pick a, a county, MPO, district, or urban area, and you tell it in the, which uh, area of interest you're, you're interested in, and it will just grab all those records that, that fall spatially within those boundaries. Um, I do want to highlight this filter by graphic tool. So this is very much like the identify tool, but it gives you uh, more advanced functionality. So here, maybe I want to draw a box around uh, some records. So here again, I tell it which, which inventory or which layer I want to search on. I tell it how I want to draw. Do I want to draw a point line or a polygon? I'm going to do a polygon. Then I hit the green draw button, and I go up to the map, and I just start drawing a box. Once I've drawn the box, I double click to end. And if I don't like that box, maybe I wanted to get those bridges in there and I'm not quite sure if they're in the box. I can clear the drawing and I can redraw it. So we'll get all these bridges. Great. And then I hit the, the search button and it will select all the records that fall within the box. Great. So I see eight records were selected. The eight records are here, and I can see them highlighted on the map. Now the enhancement that we have to this, uh, the, this filter by graphics is we have the ability to buffer these graphics now. So let's say I wanted to make it just a, a simple circle buffer around a certain point. So if I, I select the graphic type, I hit draw, I drop a point, and now in the buffer distance, I say, maybe I'm interested, we'll make it really big. We'll make a, a five mile buffer. And I hit the green buffer button. And now it draws in. There's a five mile buffer around that point. And then I could do a search on that. And it will pull all the records that fall within that, that five mile buffer. Maybe I shouldn't have done a five mile one. It's taking a minute. a lot of bridges. Uh oh. Not like that one. I'll do, a, I'll do a smaller one. Sometimes it's uh, a little slow depending on your browser.
So we'll do this one, drop a point again. We'll make it much smaller. We'll do a one mile buffer. There we go. And do the search. And there we go. Now it's selected all those records in there. And you can do this buffer with any of those geometry types. So maybe I want to draw a line. Maybe I'm only interested in a certain corridor, like from this stretch here. And I want to draw, uh, maybe I want a, a one mile buffer around that area. You could do that same type of a search. Or if you wanted to do it off the a polygon, you could do the same thing. You go and you say, I'm interested in this area right here. I want to make a, in this case, one mile buffer. I buffer the area, and then I can make a selection of all those records that fall within that area. So pretty, pretty helpful stuff, I think, for a variety of different uses. Some other updates that we have, uh, you'll find under the gears icon here. Here we have some uh, different tools available. Uh, one of the updates is to the measure tool. Here we, uh, there's the ability to measure areas, distances, or locations. So maybe you want to draw a box and understand uh, how many square miles or eight acres or, or yard, square yards, whatever the case is. So you can, you can draw a box and double click and it tells you the perimeter and the square miles for that um, or if you want to do the distance and this is where the update is very helpful so what will happen is as I move my mouse around it will give a dynamic readout right here of the distance so you can see it's, it's updating as I move the mouse this is really helpful for a lot of people because Maybe they need to know a specific distance from like an intersection. Like I need to know what's, you know, what's a quarter mile down this road. How far is that? So you can keep on going and find the quarter mile, which is right, that's right around there, pretty close. And then you can double click an end and then you can see that. Um, very helpful. So that was the updates to the draw tool. Um, some other new enhancements, or that was the measure tool, I'm sorry. Uh, we've added a draw tool which allows you to do markup in the map itself. Uh, so here you can, you can draw different types of graphics, a point, a line, polygon, or even enter in text if you want. Uh, so for instance, let's just draw a polygon. Um, I don't know why that's, you need to draw here add the polygon in. Um, for some reason, Internet Explorer is not showing the, the color selector. I know if you open this in Google Chrome, you can see the actual color selector instead of typing in the, the actual color number here. I will talk to our developers about getting that fixed. Um, one thing that's great is that you can add in notes here. So I could add in polygon one and then well I've already drawn that this one polygon two I could draw another one over here there we go and you can see it's it's saving this information in its own file which you could then export and save as a GIS layer if you wanted to remember that information at another time you can add in text so here hey this this is the area. We could add um, this text in up here. We need to check out that spot. And then what's really helpful is this will, when you use the print to PDF functionality in the map, all this text and graphic markup you did will display in the map. Uh, and additionally, we've added some larger print sizes. Previously, we only had the 8.5 by 11 available. Now we have 11 by 17 and 17 by 22. Uh, so once we make this uh, PDF, it will show all the active layers you have. So right now I'm showing bridges. And then it will also show this markup that, uh, that I, put, I, I posted in here. We'll let that render. There we go. So you've made a, a pretty basic looking map. 
Um, it tells you that the PDF tells you this came from the TIM system. It also tells you the date that the map was created. We're not able to include a legend, unfortunately. Uh, it's just not, uh, it's a little technically challenging at this time. Um, so that is hopefully helpful for people. The only other update that I want to mention is that TIMS is mobily accessible. So that means you can access this site from a smartphone or a tablet device that has an internet browser available. You just navigate to the exact same web address and then the site will uh, render the mobile version of the site uh, depending on your device. Uh, it's not an app that you need to download from an app store like iTunes or the Google Play Store. It's just you, right now you use a mobile browser. Um, the update that we did is now when you access this from a tablet, um, at least the mini size tablet such as like an iPad mini or a smaller Galaxy uh, uh, tablet, and I'm pretty sure the, the full size Apple uh, tablets as well, uh, you will experience the mobile site which has a better experience than uh, for, for that platform than this desktop version which has a lot going on in it. Um, so that is most of the updates. I didn't get to all of the site. Uh, I want to take a break here and see if there's any questions uh, that I can answer right now. Or, and if not, then I'll move on with uh, demoing some other functionality. So. And there is a question in the chat, so okay. I'm going to go ahead and read to you. Um, it came in from David, and it, I believe the last name is pronounced Pole. It says, last week I was trying to pull up all the projects in Congressional District 11, found the boundaries, but couldn't actually list the projects. To make it even more challenging, I only wanted the projects in the AMATS MPO area, the CD. 11 intersected. Okay. Um, you're trying to pull up all the, you're just trying to query all the projects in a certain area and we probably don't have those. Ah, it was a congressional area that he was trying to look at? Congressional District 11 and just yeah. the Am AMATS MPO projects. Yeah, I guess right now this um, we don't have it as straightforward for that to do a, a, a spatial filter based off of that. We can look at adding in uh, the the congressional boundaries. I'm just taking a note right now. Add in to that uh, filter by graphic page. However, um, I don't think there would be a, a very easy way to do that directly in TIMS, my recommendation until we can add those congressional boundaries in would be to download um, the projects either within the, the ODOT district if that falls within there or just download the, the project file and uh, perform that analysis with, a, with another GIS. But uh, I will work on up the, updating that to make that search possible. I apologize. Uh, Ian? Ian? Yes. Ian? Yes. Uh, actually, you do have the con congressional districts mapped. I did. I was able to do that, but I just couldn't pull the, the projects out of it. Correct. Right. So yeah, you can. So here we do show them, but they're the they are not available in the filter by geography tool. Okay. That would, that would make it really easy for you. So what I'm going to look into doing is adding them in here so that they're an option along with county, MPO, district, and urban area. Yeah, what we did was we imported the, <clears throat> the district into GIS and then we, uh, we pulled them up that way. Right, and, and that would be um, until we can add in those uh, additional area of interest to the filter by geography tool, that would be the, the best way to go about that. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Nope, nope, you're just keeping us on our toes and asking, I'm trying to get us to do as much as we can. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank yep. You. 
great. If anyone else has questions that they'd last, like to ask Ann, you can either type them into the chat pod or you can go ahead and unmute your phone uh, by pressing pound six on your keypad. Well, Ian, it doesn't sound like there's any other questions right at this moment. Were you okay. going to go ahead and, and proceed with some other Tim yes. updates? Yes, yes. I want to I want to demo a couple more things before we wrap up. So um, here in the map itself, there's a couple other applications and functions that are really helpful. Uh, one of them is called the ODOT Path Web Tool, and I get to it from the gears icon here and it's called ODOT PathWeb. When I activate it, you won't see any menu change down below, but when you move the mouse back over the map, you have crosshairs. And you want to select, typically it's, a, it's just a state system roads. We do not have this available for local roads. Uh, but what will happen is once you click on a road, like an interstate or state route, it will open up a new browser tab or browser window and after you proceed past the disclaimer, it will load up the uh, path web or the, the photo images we have for that section of road. Sometimes it takes a minute. I might have to zoom in closer. But we have another section in the Office of Technical Services that uh, collects this information and makes it available. And they go out with a van and they collect, uh, let's try a little bit closer. They collect this information on a two-year cycle. So they collect half the state one year and half the state the other year. Uh, and then it's available here. If I can get it to load. Hmm. Ah, it just took a minute. There we go. It's on the other tab. So here, uh, there's, uh, there's four different cameras available. Uh, there's a, a front view. Right, you know, I'll turn them all off so you can see them easier. So there's the front view, very big, shrink this down. And then there's the like a right shoulder view and a left shoulder view. And then there's also a rear view that's uh, shot out of the, the back of the van. And you'll see this GPS map also right here. And that shows you the location of the image along the road. So this blue dot represents where we're at. And then you can use this play speed and controls to drive down the road. And you can see different things. And what's helpful here is you can even stop the image. We'll stop on this truck right here. So here's this truck. You can even zoom in on these images to get better detail. And the way I did that is I just, with the mouse in the area of the picture, I click in the mouse or clicking the, the picture and zoom in using the mouse zoom or, or wheel bar. Uh, and you can zoom around. You'll notice at the bottom of the images we have uh, the county route and section information. And it also tells you the exact date that that image was taken, which can be very helpful. You can jump around just by clicking on different sections of road that are highlighted here. And it will update the pictures to that location. Uh, you can share this information as an email, and it will send you send this, that person a hyperlink of that exact location. Or you could also download those images and save them as a JPEG if you wanted to save those images for different reasons. So PathLab is a very powerful tool. It saves a lot of people time instead of having to go out and drive to a specific location if they want to see something about uh, something along the, that road. Another service that we have uh, linked in TIMS, which is very similar, is called the, the Map Channel. And it works just like the Path Web. This, uh, you, you click this, you get the crosshairs, and you, then you go to a section of road, and you click on it, and it will open up a new browser window. And this time it takes you to this uh, dualmaps.com, which is a non-ODOT site. It's a third-party application that we have no control over. We just found and we thought was really cool. Uh, and here it does a mashup of Google Street View, being oblique imagery on the right-hand side, uh, which is not always available, but if it is, it's very helpful. And then the Google Street Map uh, right here. So as you move 
any of these locations around. You know, all the images update, and it's just uh, it's a it's a very helpful tool. The one thing about these is that you don't necessarily know when the image was taken. Uh, like in PathWeb, we have the exact date the image was taken here. Over here, you'll see copyright images or copyright notices, but that doesn't necessarily reflect the date of the image. But it's still pretty useful for a variety of things. Um, you can also switch base maps talking about imagery. So here, if you want to work in TIMS and you want to look at imagery in the map, you can, you can switch there. We have this imagery available, which comes from ESRI, or you could you could access the OSIP imagery from uh, the OSIP program here in the state of Ohio. We have both OSIP 1, OSIP 2, and OSIP Best Available, which would uh, provide the highest resolution uh, for a given area between the two OSIP projects. Another tool that's helpful in Tim are uh, some of these find location tools. So I know a lot of people need to find our log point or county route section information. So you can use the fog, find log point tool to do that. Uh, we have two options. You can click on the map to find that information. By clicking on the, the blue click on map button, you get the crosshairs. And then you click on a section of road. And then it drops a flag. And it tells you, here's your, your NLS ID and your log point and your latitude longitude. Or, um, Instead of doing that, if you know a specific county route section you want to go to, you could use these drop downs to find one. So maybe I'm interested in a route in Franklin County. It finds all the routes that are available in Franklin County. I select, let's take Interstate 70. Let me do that. There we go. And then it tells you the, the, the lowest log point value and the max log point value. And we'll, we'll just go to 3. And I hit find. Ooh. There we go. And then it will update the map to that location and drop a flag, a flag at that spot. So very helpful for finding county route section or, or log point information. Uh, alternatively, you could also search for latitude and longitude. If you needed to click on a map and you were wondering, hey, what's the latitude longitude at this intersection? You could do the same thing. And it finds the latitude longitude based wherever you, you click that flag. Or if you have a latitude longitude from some other form, you could copy and paste that in here and click the find. And it will center the map on that latitude longitude that you put in there. So very helpful stuff for finding locations. You could also enter in addresses if you wanted to find a specific address within the state of Ohio. Um, a few last comments about the map. You can upload your own information here if you want. So if you have shape files or KML files or Excel files with information, you can upload that stuff. I'll do a quick demo of this latitude longitude. Maybe you have an Excel file that has coordinate information. We do ask that you provide it in decimal degree format. So here is a Excel file with some bridge locations. I upload it to the site. And now it asks me to map out the latitude and longitude columns that are available in that table. And I click the Add Coordinates button. And there we go. It mapped all those locations uh, that were available on that Excel file. And then if I go here, I can load that. Should load that. And you should be able to perform you should be able to perform analysis on all of these things here. So if I do the filter by graphics, my log point results. It's not showing it. Hmm. Okay. The other option that you have is you can, uh, you can share maps. And this is very helpful for when you're talking to different people and you, or if you want to make a, a smart book map, bookmark for yourself. Um, I'm going to jump over to this one. Clean this map up a little bit. This will not share any files that you've uploaded. It will only share 
layers that are available in the TIM system. So it will remember any layer that you have activated. So maybe I want this map of the bridges and the PCR information. So if I click on the share map with friends, it creates this URL and then you can just copy and paste that into an email or you could click this verify button and it will open up a new browser tab and it will show uh, basically what that link is going to remember. And then you could always bookmark this link now that you have it in your, your URL address and it's like a pretty smart bookmarking. So it's an easy thing to do if you're going to be working in this area a whole lot and you just want to keep on referencing this often. You can also, just as a, you can, you can minimize or maximize the, uh, the size of the map itself depending on the size of your computer screen that you're working on. So that is just about it. Um, a lot of stuff going on with Tim. A lot of great things here. Uh, I do want to share this. So we have some upcoming training coming on. Uh, on June 16th, we have a workshop in central office. Uh, that we have two sessions, a 9 a.m. session and a 12.30 session. There will be a couple hours long. And it's just a hand-on workshop that, uh, where, where there will be an instructor from my group and we'll walk you through the site, very similar to this um, presentation, but it will allow you to, to click through it with us and ask us interactive questions and, and whatever we can help you out with. We have another webinar coming up uh, on the 13th of July. And we have a workshop in ODOT District 12 in August. We also have a monthly email uh, that uh, we send system updates to, uh, about. If we have new data sets coming out or if we've made enhancements to the site, um, you can get those updates on a monthly basis. Just send me an email here at the Tim's email address and I'll get you subscribed to that email, uh, that monthly email. And then here's just my general contact information. Here's the TIMS uh, web, uh, website link, my personal email here at ODOT, and then the, the TIMS email, and also my phone number. So I really appreciate your time today. Uh, we got a few minutes left if there's any additional questions. Uh, if not, though, I, uh, I hope that it's been useful and, and look forward to helping you out. If there are any questions, you can feel free to pose them in the chat pod or unmute your phone line to ask Ian directly. I did put a link for the registration flyer for the upcoming workshops that Ian announced um, in the chat pod if you're interested in attending. Well, Ian, it must have been a very thorough presentation because there aren't any questions. So thank you All for right. your time. And thank you to everyone who attended today. We'll make sure to send you out a link to the recording once it's available. Have a good day. Thank you.